Glenn Greenwald calls out Ro Khanna for pushing endless wars. He calls out both parties, but he quote tweets this uh, video that uh, we're going to watch right now. And let's play the video and then I'll read his tweet. Here is Ro Khanna on breaking points with um, Crystal and Sagar. What's your thinking about this extra $25 billion? I, I will support yeah. it. I know some of your viewers yes. will yeah, not like, like the like answer. That. Okay. But I, we a progressive is I mean, supporting I, I think we have to, giving $25 uh, support billion to Ukraine, Ukraine to while Nazis. we also seek uh, a just peace. And if we don't support them now, mm. uh, they're, you know, we're giving license for Putin to make more gains into Ukrainian territory. And I clearly believe that Putin was morally wrong and wrong under an international law. Now, if we can support uh, Ukraine and if they can continue to make some progress, it's been hard uh, fought progress, but some progress, then at the same time, we should be engaging our allies, France, India, others, uh, to see a just peace. So let's say this, 25 billion, the Ukrainians do with the 25 billion, what they've done with 100 billion, which is use it, make very little progress. When we're sitting here nine months from now, and they ask for another 25 billion, what's the answer then? You give it to them again, we pursue peace. Like what, what is the limiting principle on the amount of aid that we're willing to send to Ukraine? Well, look, everything yeah. is contextual. Yeah. I'm not going right. to sit here and say for the next 20 years we're going to be right. uh, funding Ukraine. But the point is that— But you're also uh, gonna, not going to say anything to definitive. Them. But you're also not going to say anything definitive in the opposite direction. M M Marianne Williamson does this too. Well, no, I don't want to. I don't want a blank check. Okay, then how much? Ah, give us the amount. What is— because if you're saying there is a there is a too much amount, there is a threshold. But you see, the reason they want to be tied to a threshold is because Ro Khanna and Marianne Williamson know very well that the war pigs of the Democratic Party, there's no telling how long they're going to drag this out. And if they drag it on year after the year, this money is going to continue to go. So they can't be locked in a number that's going to put them as opposition to the Ukraine war at any point. That's the reason why they never give an answer to specifically then what is the amount that's too much. In this request. And then we've got to continue to make uh, progress in trying to see uh, how we get Russia out of uh, the Donbass region and where they've violated sovereignty. Like if, if we pull out, if we pull aid, let's say we don't pass said package, then actually a diplomatic solution looks a lot more likely. Now, of course, I'm not saying that's just, and if I were them, I would be furious as well. But we also have to consider our own interests here. Well, yeah. the, 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 the question is, what are they capable of doing and what do they want as a just solution? Yeah. If they come to a conclusion that they themselves have had too many loss of lives and that they want some compromise uh, that is short of a just pace, mm -hmm. that's very different than us pulling aid and forcing their hand, which sets a horrible precedent. Now, I must speak to this because I just thought of this. Understand, this is the reason for the pivot of breaking points, the pivot of crystal ball, the pivot of Kyle Kalinske. They are pivoting to be the new mainstream, to be able to bring on figures like that. And you know what they can't do if they want to bring on figures like Chris Matthews, who was on a couple of weeks ago, and Ro Khanna. You know what they can't do is be an independent channel that supports third-party movements. That's what you can't do. Because then these figures will be less likely to come on. You see the pivot? So the pivot is has all to do, all to do with self-preservation. There is, they didn't make any sort of calculation looking up the NLRB. Now, get the fuck out of here. Let's continue. In mm -hmm. my view, uh, for China and Taiwan, for Russia continuing the action of aggression. I mean, Russia took Crimea. Now they're taking Donbass. What's next? I mean, if we don't oh my uh, stand up and say, uh, as a big power, you can't. Crimea and the Donbass wanted not to be a part of Ukraine after the U.S. backed coup leadership took over. What are you talking about? I'm sorry, that applies to Donbass. In Crimea, they already took a vote. They don't want to be, they want to be part of Russia. The damage that is done by a person who publicly calls themselves progressives 
while at the same time is a neocon. Do you understand the co-opting of the ide- the ideology, the language? It just makes it so difficult to ever build any sort of coalition with them because they have one foot in the cesspool while telling us they have one foot out. I can't see that one foot though. They tell us they have one foot out, but let's continue to finish. Can't up. just take a little power or as other country, then it uh, undermines the the rule of law in, in in the international system. So let's go to Glenn Greenwald's assessment of this here. Glenn Greenwald says the establishment wings of both parties and all of the Democratic Party. Now I understand that is scathing in itself. The establishment of both parties. So both parties establishment, but not only the Democrat is not just establishment, it's the entire party, including the progressives. This is the reason why we call them the war party, Marianne Williamson. When you went on the Jimmy Dore show and he said they're the war party. I don't know if they're, they, you don't. What faction of the Democratic Party are the anti-Ukraine war faction? There's a, there's a faction of the Republican Party that has that. Even if they're projecting and, and not serious, at least they have people who are putting on a show about it. We don't even have anybody on, on in the left, so-called left in the Democratic Party that's even putting on the show, including Bernie Sanders, including AOC, all of the squad. Uh, Glenn goes on to say, um, and all of the Democratic Party have the same exact view on the war in Ukraine, but also on U.S. foreign policy in general. There's dissent on this all over the world, left and right, but in D.C., every establishment sector is in lockstep. And I wholeheartedly agree. We're not going to watch that clip. He looks shameful even saying he's going to support it. You you ought to be ashamed of your damn self. Here's Empire of Lies again. Incredible, this clown, Ro Khanna, is spewing the same tired Cold War domino theory that was used to get the u.s into vietnam we all know how that turned out right here's another comment dan cohen it's remarkable that rokana has long ingratiated himself with the progressive left while representing the interests of of his silicon valley constituency which since 2014 was feasted on the corpse of ukraine and is used used it as a laboratory for the fourth industrial revolution. He's a permanent war proponent as much as any politician. And that's the, that damage they're doing to the progressive brand. They don't give a fuck because they don't really care. But this is another point of the segment. It actually could be a different segment. Anytime Rokana, what I've noticed, anytime Rokana comes out and does his neocon stuff, vote, whether it's a vote or he has to go out and speak um, in line with the Ukraine war, you know what else comes out? He start, he'll say, oh, but I'm introducing a bill of this progressive bill. He does something, quote unquote, progressive to counter it. And guess what happened? Common Dream helped to do that. They come out with an article. I mean, they're covering it, but there's not a coincidence that this article comes out. And I'm going to read the um, full headline here. It's on Common Dream. Rokana confronts big pharma lawyer over Medicare drug prices. You see, this is the dynamic where he has to keep balance. Anytime he does his neocon dancing, he tries to keep balance by pointing out something progressive, by saying I'm introducing a bill, by an article, by doing, by showboating in this hearing so that an article is written or he, he calls in a friend at Common Dream to write an article about what he did to counter it. This is what I've noticed Rokana does so often. And we have to start calling this guy out that we are seeing what you're doing, sir. We can see it. The California Democrat accused Johnson and Johnson, maker of the 160,000 per year leukemia drug, I can't pronounce that, Imbruvica, 
of floating a flimsy legal theory in a desperate attempt to protect profits. This guy got the fucking audacity. So this happens to come out a day or two, if not the same day, as Rokana's appearance with breaking points is making going viral and people are going after him. It is just simply not a coincidence. Um, he does it in interviews too. He, I pointed it out when he was, used to do it in interviews. He would go on the Brianna Joy Gray interview. She would ask him, why are you doing this? And then he would just out of the blue, just start saying a bunch of progressive shit that had nothing to do with the language. Oh, this is what I'm doing. And this is what I'm doing because he knows he, what I'm seeing speaking to is that Ro Khanna absolutely understands that a lot of the things he does is very neoconish, is very right wing. And that's why he has to cover it up or sort of supplement it or sort of, uh, mask it by saying and showboating and boasting about some sort of progressive thing that he's done. That's the MO of Rokana. And we have to start calling it out um, each time. 